So kind of following on from what Shuba said, really, so I'm going to do talk a little bit about an antenatal detection audit for Yorkshire and Humber, and I did 2019 and 2020. Um, and then just a little picture on the left that can show just why it can be so difficult. So actually, this baby isn't particularly curled, isn't on the side, but you'd think they'd be in a nice position, but then they put their arms over their heart, which is very rude and they do it all the time. So it is tricky. Um, so I'm obviously very out of date because I've gone with CCAD, but yes, yeah, so it was the NICOR. So basically, it's just saying that antenatal diagnosis, as Shuba said, evidence suggests that the antenatal diagnosis of major CHD can improves postnatal outcomes, particularly with regards to the serious morbidity such as brain damage. Just to say, for the purposes of comparative audit, we reviewed the data for babies who required cardiac surgery or intervention in the first year of life, including things that you can't diagnose antenatally because they've all got them. So PDAs, ASDs, PFOs. And it's just the NICOR, basically, they will look at whether it, any of these patients have had these interventions. Was it antenatally diagnosed? Yes or no. So important caveats therefore for this is it doesn't include neonates that had a postnatal antenatal diagnosis and passed away prior to having any treatment or or if they had intervention after 12 months of age so we're looking at those major congenital heart diseases that survived to treatment that had that in the first year of age it also doesn't take into account limitations of fetal scanning so in order to scan a fetal heart you have to get through the mum um, so if mum's got a large BMI, it can be really tricky. As you saw on the first slide, baby can have their arms over their chest. They can have their back to you, which, which gives shadows. They can be twisted. There's lots and lots of things that can make scanning really super tricky. And finally, it relies on the correct coding of the antenatal diagnosis. And coding can be missed or the wrong button can be clicked so it's just another reason why it's very important to do all the coding because that's where we pull all this information from so i'm going to skip past this because shuba showed that so 2019 so in total the number of children who are less than one who has cardiac surgery or a catheter intervention in 2019 not including pdas as previously were 216 so out of those 126 had an antenatal diagnosis which is a 58.3% pickup rate. Very briefly going back here, as you can see, the highest that they will mention is 55% because we do know it's tricky. So actually, we had a really good year that year um, in the in the Yorkshire and Humber network. We picked up picked up a lot. Um, so I'm going to give credit for these maps to Bex Newbegin. I don't know if she's signed in, but postcode maps from my head will be forever due to her. She showed me how to do them. So these basically just look at areas and we were trying to look at it, see, see if they can see if there's any specific areas that things are tricky to pick up or we can put in some extra training or things like this. So throughout everything, picked up antenatally is green not picked up antenatally is red so the postnatal diagnosis so as you can see from here it's pretty much there isn't a specific pattern which shows actually a certain area is amazing and picks everything up or a certain area is is seems to be struggling could have some extra help so it's pretty much a spread we went on to split them into different groups so for transpositions we had 70 percent pickup rate antenatally in 2019 for transpositions so that again is really good because again TGA is basically one of the main job of a fetal cardiologist and the, the screening program is to pick up the TGAs because these are the ones that there's, the evidence proves they have significantly better outcomes if they're delivered in a cardiac centre. There isn't really a sort of group that seems to be an area that are doing better than the other they are generally quite spread out but overall TGA in 2019 did well. So coactations and hypoplastic arches again had a 70 percent pickup rate in 2019 so we had 27 patients with 19 of them picked up antenatally and again there wasn't an area that stood out and that's kind of through the whole thing really. Single ventricles so with a dominant left ventricle, so a small right side, there was 15 patients with and 80% of those were picked up, um, which is really, which is really good. And actually in your 
normal screening shots that they see the four chamber view these normally have quite an abnormal four chamber view so you are you would expect this to be picked up and referred on so we they've done what that's been done well and the single ventricle with the dominant right so the hyperplastic lefts again they had a 92 percent pickup rate in 2019 with a total of 12 patients and only one that was postnatally diagnosed and I think only having that one patient, you can't pick up and say, actually, we need to give any additional training because it's one patient. It's not a, they're not running through. Tetralogies. So again, we have four, so few, obviously more of them because it's a more common thing. We had 43 patients with, again, 70% of those were antenatally diagnosed. AVSD, so the AVSD is generally, I'll talk a little bit later, but they seem to be something that is a bit trickier and people find harder um, to pick up. So in 2019, we had 12 of them and six of them were picked up antenatally. So it was a 50%. Um, and weirdly, because obviously um, we're in Leeds, there seemed to be a bit of a collection around sort of the Leeds-Bradford area. Um, but again, it was only four and there are two different centres, so it's a few centres. So it's again, it's it's tricky, but generally ABSDs, I think, were people found harder to, to pick up. Right, double aortic arches, so again, did really well. So almost 90%. There was only one patient that had a double aortic arch that was missed. Um, and it's just as people are getting more confident with that um, three vessel trachea view. So 2020, as we all know, there was a coronavirus apocalypse and everything ground to a halt. And I think there was a lot of mums that were pregnant that were really quite scared to leave the, the, their house. So we did notice that we had quite a lot less referrals through. We had people with who had family histories that didn't want to come to appointments that we would have routinely offered them appointments. So I think people weren't getting to and accessing their normal screening so there was a quite significant drop in antenatal diagnosis rate in 2020 um, so it went from 58% in 2019 to 43.3 percent that were antenatally picked up which obviously is quite a, a big drop but I think it is explainable so again looking at it there isn't anywhere specific TGAs, so we only had a 56% TGA pickup that that year. Um, and just to go over again, this is only looking at patients that had intervention. And I know of two very sad cases where we had um, one anti one antenatal diagnosis and a postnatal, and there was a postnatal diagnosis that were not born in Leeds that sadly passed away before they could reach us. Um, so there is an ex there are one of each extra. And that just goes to again to show how important antenatal diagnosis of TGA is. Coarctation hyperplastic arches, there was a 30% antenatal pickup. Now these are really tricky to pick up because hyperplastic arch is a little bit more obvious because there is small in that three vessel view but the, the discrete coarctations if you've got balanced ventricles it, you, until that duct closes we we know that that's hard to pick up and it's unlikely to pick up so that just saying that even though it is a low rate we do know that that is something that often doesn't present itself until the duct is shut which obviously is a postnatal thing so single ventricles with dominant left, so the hyperplastic rights, again down at 60%, which as I said earlier, if you've got in this four chamber, if you've got a small ventricle, it normally is quite clear. Um, but again, I think this is people just not accessing their care. Unfortunately, we don't have the data of, of those patients as to whether they missed any antenatal screening or not, which would have been useful, but we just didn't get that data. Hyperplastic left hearts, 50% again, so three were picked up and three were were not picked up antenatally. These, I mean, these can be tricky because you can get progression. So at your 20 week scan, there can it can look like a normal four, four chamber, normal outflow tract if colour isn't put on the valve. So with aortic stenosis, your ventricle itself could look okay, the size could look okay, 
but the screening sonographers don't use colour often. So if you don't see the turbulent flow across the aortic stenosis, it would, would actually be relatively easy in some of these cases for it not to be picked up, um, especially in the more sort of borderline ones. Unfortunately, often pictures aren't saved because there just isn't in the NHS computer systems, there just isn't the date, the capacity to hold the amount of screening fast views that they do to hold the data for that. So the ones that were born, you sort of looked back and there wasn't any 20 week scans that we could look at to say, actually, yeah, no, it looked absolutely fine. I completely understand why that wasn't seen or actually, no, that should have been referred through to, to help with some further training. But it's just worth knowing that especially left heart disease, it can progress quite significantly through pregnancy from relatively normal looking at 20 weeks to looking very clearly single ventricle closer to, to delivery. Tetralogy, so generally they stayed quite well picked up. So we had 68% pickup rate of tetralogies. AVSDs, so as I said previously, they are hard. And this year, with everything being lower, that was even lower. So we were down at 24% antenatal detection for the AVSDs. And as you can see, it's, it's very widespread. There isn't a specific area um, that aren't picking these up. It's, it's everywhere. And they go 100% right in double aortic arch pickup, which is great. And it's just getting that confidence with that three vessel tracheal view, which is new, um, well, in the last sort of 10 years or so. So some thoughts. Um, 2019 overall was an excellent year. We had increased rate of antenatal diagnosis from the previous NICOR. Um, Sorry, someone in the, in the corridor, I'm in the hospital, they're having a party outside, so apologies for noise. Um, it was increased level of antenatal diagnosis and they, they did well. 2020, COVID hits, everything went wrong. Um, so I, there was a dip, but I think that was explained. And just a point just to say, we know it's really hard. If in doubt, I think generally, and I spoke to Shuba last night to check that I wasn't sort of putting things on and on this and sending it out to the network and then you were going to get, she was going to get loads of extra referrals. We would, well, not we anymore, because as Shuba said, I've abandoned ship for a couple of years. If in doubt, they would much rather receive a referral than not. AVSDs in particular seem to be something that's struggled with and they can, so in, if it's a small ventricular component, a small atrial component, if the valve isn't super dysplastic or if there's two annulus, they can be they can be sometimes can be really tricky. It's one of these things that you think, oh, how would you miss an AVSD? But that's the big complete AVSDs that are very obvious. There, there are some that are less, less obvious, and we we do they can be tricky. TGA is just a point, again, again, Shuba said it, and I'm just reiterating it. They're really important. TGA's Fetally, I never realised actually how different fetal scanning was in a TGA than it is postnatally. In postnatal scans, they're very clearly parallel. There isn't crossover. There, it's it's obvious. You can get what looks like crossover on a fetal echo in a TGA. So unless you've seen the branching of the pulmonary arteries and not just the crossover, you you've not excluded a TGA. So again, if you're not seeing that pro if you're not seeing that well in your in your scanning and your screening and you're not seeing the branching of the pulmonary arteries much much rather would receive a referral for that than not and just sort of a caveat as i wasn't as exactly certain who was logging into this but as the fetal cardiology team we completely depend on that excellent back-breaking work of the screening sonographers who are so busy scanning so many babies every day in picking things up or even not necessarily picking things up but just saying I've not seen it normally it doesn't look right but I don't know what if you're not sure speak to the local cardiac champion or refer on to us if they're not there so just final sort of slide on what are we doing so these are the the sort of the views tiny tickers are running are currently running a training program actually going around the region to increase the screening sonographer confidence in fetal cardiac scanning it can be really difficult 
Leeds actually was the pilot area for this training. So a lot of extra stuff is, goes on in the Leeds and the surrounding areas. Um, Tiny Tickers is a charity close to, to the Hearts and Shuba is actually a trustee on, on the board of that. Um, there's also, which is excellent, a focus group that's led by the fetal cardiology team in LGI, particularly sort of shout outs to Jan and Sam. Um, with local screening sonographer cardiac champions in the districts and the tertiary non-lead centres. There are regular teaching sessions on fetal echoes. Sam and Jan have put a lot of, lot of work into hard copy resources with hints and tips and screen to send out to all of them. Um, so there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to really make the antenatal diagnosis rate as good as it possibly can be. And I'm sure that this year's numbers hope will have gone back up again because definitely before I left they had seen a back increase back up in the referrals um, to pr the pre-COVID era. So just some basically any questions um, if anyone has